Okay, let's talk about filling the content gaps and SEO optimizing your articles using phrase. Optimizing your article for search engines is probably one of those things that uh, you know you need to do it. You don't really want to do it because it takes time away from creating content for your reader. And you've probably already written your article with the intention to help someone, you know, with solve a problem or something. And then having to go back and add or edit or change the article in any way to sort of appease the search engines is, is just kind of one of those extra steps. <clears throat> and, you know, it's, it's kind of, it's just one of those things that in the past took a lot of time, but now there are tools that are, are available to help kind of do the, let's say the majority of the work. It doesn't actually do it for you, but it, it sets you up in such a way that you can just pretty easily do it yourself without having to spend a ton of time. So what we're going to cover here is just filling the content gaps, aiming for a hundred percent topic score in, in phrase, and then a little bit more about how to, you know, maybe sort of structure your articles a little bit. When I say fill in the content gaps, basically what I mean is that your article compared to the rest of the articles that are ranking for the term that you're trying to rank for, uh, in the eyes of Google, there's a certain uh, s sort of amount of content that when a reader or a visitor searches in Google for something, uh, the resulting content that gets sent or that are choices for that reader to choose from typically will contain a certain amount of, uh, of content that Google sees as the sort of answer for that reader. And so... If your content, if your article doesn't have that, or at least a, a good portion of it, in addition to what makes yours unique, uh, then there's a good chance that you just never rank for that term. And then your readers never find you unless you specifically send your article to them, which of course is sort of defeats the purpose. You wanna be able to sort of plant the seed and let the article grow and bring in traffic over time. So the good news is that phrase can make this part really easy for you. And it basically does that by going out and getting all the research for the top, I believe it's the top 20 results in Google. And then it'll allow you to compare your article to those articles. And uh, basically what you'll do is you'll try to shoot for a topic score of about 100%. This will make more sense in just a moment. If you haven't seen phrase before, I'm about to show you uh, what this looks like. But basically, there's a score that shows how many sort of uh, the, the topic keywords that you're using in your content that are expected in Google for this particular search term that you're targeting. And uh, also one of the things that, sh that um, Phrase does for you is it kind of creates an average score or like an average of what's what's out there like in those top 20 results how many images do they have how many uh, links word count headings things like that so that you know that in general and that's not very it's not necessarily specifically that google likes that exact range but given that the top 20 results on average have those you probably want to do at least the average, but better than the average as far as word count and, and good actionable headings and things like that. So uh, let's say that you're writing a, an article about Tokyo Tower. I wrote this in Shortly AI because, well, it's awesome and it helps me write really, really fast. So I whip this up in just a couple of minutes and let's say that now I want this to actually be able to rank in Google for something. So I would copy this and that would go into phrase where I've already started a new document for the search term Tokyo Tower, just to save some time. Normally in the content brief tab, I would have an outline here if I was following the full um, content workflow where I start in phrase, do my research, create an outline, then take the outline into shortly. This is an example where I've I already know a ton about Tokyo and Tokyo Tower and stuff like that. So 
I just went straight into writing. And now I want to optimize it for, uh, let me turn off Grammarly here. I want to optimize it for SEO. Let's see if I can zoom in just a little bit more to make sure you see everything. And so here's my content. It's now inside a phrase. And now I want to fill in the content gaps. So <laughs> a negative 4%. Okay. This is actually a recent addition to, um, to phrase where you can see here that Tokyo Tower is used 13 times and on average. Uh, the competition only references it five times in their articles. And plus, given that my article is only 418 words, you can see that down here in the lower left hand corner, that Tokyo Tower would seem like it's keyword stuffing. So what you would do here is you would probably want to reduce the number of times that Tokyo Tower is used in this content. And one way to kind of help you out there, you can click on highlighting, you can see where these things are being used. So you might say things, you might change it to be something like it was not the first and then uh, keep going. See, I, you notice how when I clicked on that one, it changed to all the ones of that particular to green. That's really nice. You can just kind of use that to go through and change that up. So one of the things you'll, of course, want to do is just really what you're trying to do in phrase is make all of them green like this. So you notice that I used Japan, the keyword Japan, once more than the average. That's fine. And the longer your article gets, the more you can use these keywords. These will change to green or yellow. If this article was longer, like if it was maybe 1,500 words, and it used Tokyo Tower that many times, it'd probably be fine. But that's phrase basically trying to help you out so that you don't you, you avoid keyword stuffing. And so now you just kind of look through see top topics is what is, is sorted by right now. You kind of look through here and you see like visitors, you know, I haven't used the word visitors. You'd go in here somewhere in your content and you would find somewhere where you could use these words. And in, in some cases, it, it does mean that you need to add a little bit more content instead of trying to fit the words in there. And, and that's fine, right? You ultimately want to end up with an article that is good for the reader and also good for uh, Google or search engines, I should say. And so you just keep going through this and using all these words. And, and up here, you can also change this to long tail words and uh, see tallest building it says but see tallest building you be careful tokyo tower is the tallest self-supporting steel structure in the world is not the tallest building um, shiba park is definitely something you'd want to mention and uh, because shiba park is a park that's right at the base of tokyo tower and it is very common for visitors to go to shiba park to view the tower and also enjoy the dining experiences around there so that's how you would do um, content. Uh, I say content analysis, topic score, like filling in, the, like getting to 100% topic score, content gap filling. You, you can, it's not advertised directly as, you know, competitive analysis. But if you think about it, this is essentially competitive analysis, right? It's your article versus these articles all of these and so when phrase goes out and gets all that cool content for you you should ideally read over the overview so you can kind of see what the others are talking about make sure that your article talks about most of it also adds your own unique content to it as well and then also in the overview up here you can see all the, the average content like the word count you know looks like the average word count for articles about Tokyo Tower are 574. You'd probably want to beat that, maybe even double that. Uh, heading counts, I don't have any headers shown here because I didn't technically turn these into headings, but you just turn these into a headings up here like that, you know, and then this would change for you. Same thing with images. I almost never worry about images here. I don't insert images into the phrase editor, so you'll probably never see this change. You might do links if you want. Uh, I wouldn't worry too much about that. I think word count and and heading, well, probably just word count is all I'd really worry about here. And then note these for later when you're in your website and you're creating it, you're publishing the article. 
make sure you kind of reach some of these kind of uh, milestones and do better than your competition. So that's uh, filling content gaps and a little bit of SEO optimization using phrase. If you have any questions, feel free to hit me up in the comments below or if you're a member of the AI Content Dojo, which is totally free, you can shoot me an email and I will either create new content to help you specifically and help others along the way or just directly answer your questions for you. And uh, if you like this type of content, please consider subscribing to this channel and also joining the email list on AIContentDojo.com. And I look forward to helping you in the future. Take care.